So yeah, we so went to there. Michael's to see if we can get some blendable markers. Well, these are just a different brand that I had, but they're working. It's looking sweet. What I am noticing is the black lines coming up a little bit. See that? Oh, yeah, a little bit. Huh? So I don't know if it's the slick paper. Yeah, probably. But can you see it? See, it's smudging. So. It looks like it's smudging, but then it goes back to dry. Well, but see that line right there? Oh, yeah, it did. But like, see, if I scrub it, you could see it coming off. See that? Mm -hmm. So it could be the, the fact that that paper is slick. That's what I think. Mm. Um, because the, the ink is not in it. It's like on the top of the paper. So. So with this particular drawing, would you be willing to do several different color schemes or yeah that's um thing is since we have access to the black yeah you could just print them indefinitely and just do different versions <laughs> for your fans and bernie wrightson's fans they could own a nice super piece of art history Oh, yeah. My stomach's growling now. <laughs> You're hungry <Yeah>. again? No. <laughs> uh, we're both jacked up on coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're both full. <laughs> kind of full because it was a healthy breakfast. Yeah, she's already coming alive. Look at that. The eyes popping. There it is. <laughs> you can hear it in the video too. <laughs> you can hear it? You probably can, yeah. It's so crisp. Get it closer. A lot of times when you put pure color like that on the edge, it makes it pop a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm doing that. So when did you actually start coloring? In the 80s. Um, I uh, Back then, everything was colored on a thing called a, a gray line, which they would get a stat of the black and white art. It wasn't a copy. It was a stat. So it was very um, slippery. Mm. And we would use um, water-based markers. And to blend it, you would use a Q-tip. And you would spit on it. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Literally spit on yeah, it. Yeah, you'd literally spit on it. So... For years after that, I, if I saw a Q-tip, I would I would salivate. Wow. <laughs> uh, look at that blending style. And so prior to the 80s, you were painting though, right? You were doing a lot of acrylic work? Um, Mostly oils. Um, oils? I, I started out doing paperback book covers, like westerns and romances. And then my roommate at the time, um, Brent Anderson, he was, uh, we both came out to New York from the California. So he was working for comics. And um, back then, comics were like a regular source of work. Sometimes you do illustration, you might get a job and then you won't have anything for a while. So I started to do comics because it was regular, mm -hmm. regular work. And back then it was, you know, they had a monthly book that needed to be done constantly. So, you know, you would, you would always have an inflow of work. Do you remember your first project? I did a Conan cover for Marvel. That was Sweet. the first job. Was it not this one? The one right here? No, no, <laughs> it wasn't that one. It, um, the first one I did was a, um, he was underwater and he was fighting a, um, a moray eel, like a giant 
more AEO. And all those original paintings are... They're gone. They're gone. It's old. But we're open to recreations, fans. <laughs> that looks sweet. And so when when did you get hired or how did you get hired in, at Wellstorm? Um, I was actually just sharing the studio with Wills, Jim, and Scott Williams. And how did you get in touch with them or how did you well, end I, up? Well, I lived in California before I went out to New York. And Wills, Scott, and Jim, Jim was a new um, partner, but um, they started a little... They worked in an apartment and I was in New York and I didn't care for New York and they knew that yeah. I didn't care for New York that much. So they said, Oh, we're, if you want to come back to California, we're renting this apartment. You could, you could work in the apartment and live there. And so that's what I did as I, um, came back to, um, California from New York and and we you, shared a studio, but it was basically an apartment, and they came to work in it every day, and I lived there. But you met them through the end industry? You just met them at yeah, a um, convention? Yeah, my or? common person was Brent Anderson, um, New, Wilf, and Scott. And Brent lived out here, and he introduced me to them, and I would hang around with Wilf and Scott, and that's how I got to know them. Mm -hmm. And Brent is mostly famous for the Rocketeer? No. Brent Anderson, um, currently he's been, for several years, he's been doing this uh, book called Astro City. Astro City, that's right. But he, um, when he was working for Marvel, he did, um, he did a couple of, uh, graph he did a graphic novel with uh, X-Men that was very popular. And then he was on a series, a comic book series called Kazar. And... And uh, that they, it was an older comic that they revamped, and so he he started on that again, and uh, that's what he's known for. Those two. You also roomed with, or were roommates with Sinkevich, right? Well, no, um, Sinkevich, I shared a studio with. Oh, you shared a studio. Yeah, with. and he was in uh, Connecticut at the time, so it was Brent Anderson for a short time, uh, Brett Blevins, and. We shared a studio in, in Connecticut. 